This all starts with what we call an active region on the sun. It's a, it's a cluster of sunspots. Uh, so you can actually, it's, it's large enough now, uh, the one that we've, that's been originating all this activity is about the size of 15 Earths across, uh, one of the largest sunspot clusters that we've seen in recent history. Uh, and so as that uh, complexity of the sunspots uh, enhances, as the magnetic field of the sun that's associated with those sunspots uh, gets, gets more um, significant, uh, we start seeing eruptions, so large solar flares over the, or actually not very large solar flares over the last few days, but several of them from the same region of the sun. Uh, and associated with those, we've had what we call coronal mass ejections or CMEs. These are huge <clears throat> millions of tons of, of charged particles that lift off from the surface of the sun and head out into space. Uh, now, these happen all the time. They happen in all directions from the surface of the sun. But what makes this really unique is that we've had multiple uh, as many as five over the last couple of days that have all subsequently been directed at Earth. And so we have these five uh, large coronal mass ejections all currently on their way to Earth one after the other. And that's pretty unique. We've seen instances uh, where we get one, maybe two over a period of several days that might be directed at Earth and might impact Earth. But having something where we have this number uh, in, in rapid succession is pretty unique and exciting for us. <laughs> We've had large, uh, what we call geomagnetic storms. So that's when, when these CMEs impact the near Earth space, the, the magnetic field of the plasma environment around Earth reacts. Uh, and that's what we call a geomagnetic storm. So we've had, we have many geomagnetic storms all the time. So, so NOAA has a five level scale of how they rate these um, from G1 all the way up to G5. So kind of similar to the way we have categories for hurricanes, right? It's sort of an, a, a familiar scale. Um, we have what we call G4 storms, which are significant, but not the most extreme. Uh, we have those a few times in the last few years, especially during the period what we call solar maximum. That's the uh, about five year window during uh, the 11 year cycle that the sun goes through. We have about five years of what we call solar maximum when there's a lot of solar activity, it tends to be more intense. Then we have about five years where it's less active and called solar minimum. So we're currently kind of getting into the heart of solar maximum. So we've seen a lot more of these uh, more significant storms a lot more frequently over the last few years. We've had several G4 storms over the last two years or so. Uh, we haven't had a G5 storm, which is the highest level of the scale uh, in about 20 years, kind of in the, the mid aughts or so. Um, now, they're not necessarily predicting that this will be a G5. Um, none of these coronal mass ejections in and of themselves are huge. They're not, even though the sunspot cluster is very large, the coronal mass ejections that we've see, been seeing have not been, you know, the big one, for lack of a better term. Uh, but the fact that there are so many of them, some of these effects do kind of stack on top of each other. And so the fact that we might get hit by four or five uh, could lead to kind of a, an overall effect that's that's in the G4 range, even though, you know, any one of them by themselves might not have produced that same result. In a really severe event, um, kind of the worst case scenario, which again, is not what we're expecting, uh, there could potentially be effects to power grid. Um, these create currents in the atmosphere that essentially drive currents in the ground. And so they can affect our power systems. They can affect some of our communication systems uh, that go under the, uh, the, under the water. So submarine communications, uh, submarine meaning going underwater, not submarine like a ship. Um, and so uh, it is really important that our, our power operators are kind of aware of when these events are happening so that they can, they can mitigate the effects. But most of the time, nothing happens and that's because they're they're getting the information they need and they're taking the actions that they need to take um you know i said earlier we've had several g4 storms of the last few years and most people probably didn't notice right the the most um i guess exciting and and uh, accessible thing that people will be able to see is the potential for the aurora borealis the northern lights and, and the southern lights uh, uh, in that case um to come down the lower latitude so usually these occur in the polar regions at high latitudes you know northern Canada, Alaska, Scandinavia. Um, but as the, uh, the, ma the magnetic field of Earth responds to this more intense driving from the sun as these coronal mass ejections hit, uh, those northern lights can actually creep down to lower and lower latitudes. Now, 
that's exciting. A lot of people are excited to see the Aurora. It's definitely not alarming, right? There, there's, you're safe. It's not anything that needs to be concerned about. Um, but it is sort of a, a nice reminder and indicator that you know we are, we do have this connection to the sun, right? Even though we can't see it, uh, when the sun is active, Earth uh, is, is sees the the impact. Uh, and so if if you're at you know relatively still relatively high latitudes, uh, you know kind of the the northern tier of the U.S., southern Canada, maybe maybe down into kind of like the northern California, mid Atlantic region in the states, you may be able to see what we call red aurora. Um, so it won't be that vivid green that we all think of when we think of the aurora. Uh, it's actually, it's much more of a red color. It's caused by a different species in the upper atmosphere being impacted by those particles that are coming down. Uh, and so it might look like kind of a reddish glow on the northern horizon, fairly low. It might look similar to what you see if you're, uh, you know, looking at a city from far away or if there were, say, wildfires on the horizon, it's kind of that reddish glow. Um, so that's what people, you know, every day can kind of expect to see. Um, in even in a worst case scenario, hopefully there are not impacts to us every day, people. 